This is the museum in Ongrup and from here we are going to visit some of the homes built in the Ongrup and Needlup district before 1930. When the pioneers first came to the area they mostly lived in tents, sometimes for one or two years. However, the first buildings they put up were called humpies, which were mainly made of wheat bags sewn together and calcimined. This was a cold water paint and made them waterproof or else they were made of flattened tins with hessian to divide the walls. Because these humpies were very temporary dwellings, it is difficult to find any still standing today. However, this one, built by Mr Howard in the 1950s, is an excellent example. It is, has been made of flattened drums and he and his wife lived in it for many years. Inside we can see the stove, which has been carefully painted. The walls too were made to look attractive and a curtain probably divided this room in two for a bedroom. Lino may have been placed over the earth floor. One of the most beautiful homes in the Ongrup district was built in 1895 for John and Jean Moyer at Warpirup, west of the town. It is believed that a relative of Uncle's, one of the pioneering families, was the builder, and it took five years to build. A capsule containing newspapers of the day was buried in the foundations and is still there. Stone was gathered from the property and here we can see the workmanship of the builder with the attractive tuck pointing. This type of sash window was found in many homes. The high ceilings were of stamped metal and you will notice the fancy ventilator on the wall. Around this fireplace many travellers would have received a warm welcome and maybe a sing-song around the piano. Mrs Moyer was the only white woman in the district for seven years and visitors would have meant a great deal to her. The wash house shows the copper and cement troughs. Soap suds still stain the copper which was used for wash days as well as heating water for baths. The double brick chimney is also another feature of this home which has been empty since 1969. As it was the only home in Ongrup until the next settlement in 1911, it has been recommended to the National Trust for restoration. Another stone house was built by the Bridgman family in 1929. As they had no horses or vehicle, all the stone was carted from the creek in a wheelbarrow. A lot of hard work was put into the building of this house, which has been empty for many years. And once the roof comes off, the walls soon crumble. Inside you can see it was plastered with mud and painted. Another building similar to the previous one was built by John King and his sons in 1926 at Needlup. These homes were very warm in winter and cool in summer. Recent storms have taken the roof However, you can see how the local mud and stone was put to good use in this building. After the railway came to Ongrup in 1913, materials were easier to get and a popular one used for building was weatherboard. This little home, built in 1920, for Charlie and Kathleen Brown of Needlup has been used for many years.
As the family grew, Mr Brown and Leonard McGregor set to and made cement bricks and in 1926 four rooms were built. The timber framework used came from Coolgardie. Today these rooms are still a part of this modern home where the third generation of the Brown family live. Also at Needlup in 1920, James and Mary McCarty had this weatherboard home built by Don Munro of Ongrup. Some rooms have also been added and their second son lived there when he was married. The stone chimney must have seen many fires. It has been empty now for many years and inside we can see the fireplace. The Hessian lined walls were coated with cement and falling apart now. However, the lovely Jarra dado is still intact. One very early settler to the district was Fred West, who came in 1911. After living in a tent, he built this humpy in 1913. Among these ruins, you can see the outside walls were corrugated iron with boards on the inside held together with a framework of bush timber. Mud was rammed between the walls and it would have been a cosy dwelling. After the war, Mr West was married and two weatherboard rooms were built. As most of the property was on the other side of Peanabuck Creek, these rooms were moved to form the kitchen at the present site of this lovely old home built in 1926. The high ceilings and picture rails are typical of all rooms. Panel doors, wooden dado and open fireplace are other attractive features. Additions were later made and it is interesting to see the jam post stumps on which this house rests. Northwest of Ongrup, Mr Connell built this little weatherboard house which seems to have withstood the weather since around 1913. Later he was to build another home, part of which still exists inside this modern house of the O'Neill family. This property was then called Ongrup Rocks, the site chosen for the town site. However, the railway ended up where Ongrup is today. Mr Connell married Miss Eldridge, who, with her mother, ran the first store in Ongrup. And here in Eldridge Street, we see another weatherboard building, which was built for the then Mrs Connell in 1917 by Albany builders Bob White and two of the Humphreys. It was intended and built to have another story on top and was originally used as a boarding house. It was later sold to Mr Hill and in 1927 to Mr Arthur Slee who owned the store until 1954. You will recognise it as the RNI Bank of today. Again we find large rooms and high ceilings and in the passage there is a fanlight above the door. This sash window looks out to the back yard. Here there is a three-roomed weatherboard building, which was built by an early settler, Mr F. W. Mills, in one week. As commissioners were arriving from Perth, they had to have somewhere to sleep. The walls were of hessian and it had a dirt floor. It was completed just before the train arrived. Later, around 1950, the first room, you can see, was used as a doctor's consulting room and patients would fetch a wooden box from the store and sit on while waiting for the doctor. Another quickly erected building was with corrugated iron and here we have a grand old house. The iron and pine timber frame were brought out from England and originally erected at Coolgardie. In 1912, Robert Walker had it dismantled and railed to Broom Hill from where it was brought north of Ongrup by wagon. With all pieces carefully marked, 
it was rebuilt on its present site. Notice the little hoods over the ventilators on the top of the walls. The rooms were all large and as we look up into the ceiling we see the raised portion surrounded by fan lights. This gives this room plenty of light as it is in the centre of the building with no other windows. All the rooms were large and this fireplace, fluted iron dado and panel doors were found throughout the house as it was customary to have a fireplace in the bedrooms. Once again there is a fan light above the door and wooden battens are used to join the sheets of plasterboard. As was often found, the kitchen was a separate building and joined onto the back veranda. An early settler, Mr F. W. Mills, who helped to build the first door and the hall, part of which is still in the Ongrup Co-op, also built many other homes. This corrugated iron house was one that he built for Mr Alfred and Mrs Emily Godfrey. The inside of the corrugated iron was painted and the rooms were divided by a single sheet of plasterboard. The ceilings were of hessian, some of which has fallen down. The strong Jarrah rafters and brick chimney are still intact. Mr and Mrs Godfrey had 12 children and before a kitchen was added all the cooking was done outside in a camp oven. Carlisle Moyer, a son of the first settler, was also a good carpenter and built this corrugated iron home where his sister Mrs B Stone lived. It is now vacant on Mr Minane's property. One of the cheapest materials used was mud. In 1929, the Hounsham boys, George, Tom and Sonny, helped their brother Fred to make mud bricks from soil nearby and built the darker brick two rooms, other rooms being added as bricks were made. This was a real luxury for Mrs Dolly Hounsham, who had lived with her two children in a tent for two years. Inside the walls were plastered with mud and a dado was later added made from tea chests. This was to pre protect the walls from damage by stools rubbing against them. The whole family played musical instruments and no doubt the walls nearly burst as friends gathered for a sing-song in this little room. The rafters are made of mort sticks, which is a local tree that grows nearby, and the ridge pole is a yates sapling. As you can see, the iron roof has been tied on with wire. It has withstood many a storm, and this sturdy little house has been vacant now for many years. Another mud brick home was built by Fred Eastwood. Although erected just after 1930, it has been included because of the interesting size of the bricks. and the double brick walls. The red soil in the mortar is a contrast to the brick. Unfortunately, these bricks have crumbled badly. One reason given that the salt from a nearby creek could have caused this. Once again, this house is vacant and falling into disrepair. Around 1913, a Mr Dick Handorf came to the district and throughout the Noangrup Shire he has left his mark as a builder. This wall is part of two rooms built for Evans Brothers in 1914 and later taken over by Mr Edgar Foster. Again there are high ceilings. Note how low the handle is on the door. 
Rooms were added to it and the Foster family lived there until 1969. In 1926, the same type of mud brick was used to build Stan Vaux's home. Dick Handorf again making the mud bricks. The mould which formed this pattern was filled with mud and a pressure of 10 tonne applied. To protect the bricks from the weather, they were painted with linseed oil and coated with a mixture of cement and skim milk. A veranda was later added to the house and additions made over the years with a tiled roof being added in 1950. A fourth generation of the family still live there and the original mud bricks are still intact. Now we go to Needlup where there is another of Dick Handorf's homes built in 1926 the bricks made here had two inches of cement placed in the mould before adding the mud. This gives the bricks a solid face. A third generation of the Pococ family have just repainted this beautiful hallway. Note the coat hooks, a familiar feature in the old homes. In the lounge, we again see the high ceiling and picture rail. One important part of every home we have so far missed is the little building under the trees. Yes, it had many names. It was made of a variety of materials. But one thing they all had in common was that it was a long, long way from the house.